Hey guys, this is Sapporo Zions for Noble Desktop, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create animated images in Adobe After Effects. So we're going to be first going into Photoshop and editing this image here. We're going to separate the hot air balloons from the sky over here, and edit the sky so there's no weird cutout gaps where the balloons were. After that we're going to import the picture into After Effects, animate the balloons going up and down, and then we're going to put this uh, logo animation here into the image as well. We're going to place it kind of peeking right out from this balloon so we can read it, but it's sort of hidden too. And as you can see, this is what it looks like when we're all completed with this project. So the reason why this is very useful to learn is because it's used virtually everywhere, this uh, technique. The principles of prepping a still image for animation is essential. You'll see that skill also being used in a lot of projects and then animating someone's photograph with their logo is also very common. Lastly, let's talk external assets. By the nature of this project, we're going to be using this hot air balloon image right here. There's also an After Effects file set up that I want to share below since we're going to be using a particular text and composition size. So here we are in Photoshop and you can see that I've opened up this balloon picture. Um, I'm going to first show you this is what we're aiming for. So when I hide these layers on the right over here, you can see that they just, you know, you can still see the sky behind them. So to be able to get to this point, we're going to have to do some photo editing. So let's head over to the untouched version of this picture. So you can see that I already have it as like one background layer. That's really how most images come in to Photoshop. Or if you're working on a team, uh, most often people will just like hand you one solid layer and they'll be like, animate this. And so part of your job is learning how to cut it up and set it up for animation in After Effects. So I'm going to give you some uh, basic tips on how to get that done. So first, let's double click on the background to turn it into a regular editable layer. So over here, you hold down these, this uh, magic wand tool, you turn it to quick selection tool, and I'm going to select all of the blue sky behind the balloon. Okay, and then we're also going to select ground. Basically, we're trying to select everything that's not these three balloons in there. Now that everything is selected, except for the balloons, let's head up to select and either Command X or Control X, depending on your machine. So we've cut out these balloons, and then Command V, Control V, we've pasted them right back in. Now I'm going to separate up this layer, the three balloons layer, so each balloon has their own layer because, again, in After Effects, if this were all together, like on this one layer, this whole piece would actually move up and down like a solid block, but we want to move them individually so they all need their own separate layer. Also, I want you to note, like, this background that got cut out here. We're going to take care of that. So anyways, right back to this, we're going to pick up our lasso tool with the L button. And like before, you cut it out with that hotkey, Command X or Control X, paste it back in, Command or Control V. I'm gonna move you over here when all of these are organized. Great, they all have their own layer. Now let's name them. So this one is the leftmost balloon. So double click on the words over here and I'm gonna put in left. Now we're gonna hide them all by clicking on this I, this visibility button here. And now let's get to editing these. So I'm actually gonna make a duplicate of this layer. So just in case something goes wrong, we can head back and have our original layer over here. So in order to do that, I'm going to drag it down here. And then we have our duplicate layer. And I'm actually going to go over to my select, modify, expand, because if you look very closely, it's not really selecting the whole thing. I'm going to change this, expand by five pixels. In fact, I think I want to expand it a little bit more. So the whole thing is selected. Three pixels. Okay, I think I can work with that. We're going to go over to edit, content aware fill. If you've never used content aware fill before, it's actually really cool. So on the left shows our selection and on the right shows us after content aware fill does its job, what it's going to look like. And you can see it's filled in this area. And yeah, it's not perfect. There are like some smudges here we're going to clean up. But for the most part, it's pretty good. So this green stuff is a selection of pixels that the program is trying to learn from in order to fill in this gap over here. It's like looking around here and it's saying like, oh, there's like a blue gradient over here. So this needs a blue gradient similar to what we're picking up over here. Obviously, this is an oversimplification, but for purposes of this tutorial, it's it's fine. If you want to like mess around with the settings over here and change your sampling area, that will then change the output over here, like rectangular. It just grabs it from around. So when you hit custom, it gives you the sampling brush that activates on the left side of the screen. And it's asking you, hey, can you paint with this brush and paint in the area that you want us to sample from? If you hit apply, then you could keep working in this workspace over here, the content aware fill, but I'm just gonna hit okay. So there is our fill over there. You could tell it's been edited here, but we're going to be fixing that in the next step. 
So let's just fill in these two as well, and we'll cut right next to the next part. Okay, great. We've used content-aware fill to fill in the gaps left behind by cutting out the balloons. Now let's collapse these all so they're all in one layer. Head over to this little band-aid icon, hold it down, choose spot healing brush. Use the left and right brackets on your keyboard to get this thing bigger or smaller, the selection brush bigger and smaller. And you're just gonna run over some of the problem areas with the spot healing brush. We have blurted out sufficiently that the last thing that we're going to be doing is heading over here, back to where you found the spot healing brush tool, hold it down, head over to the patch tool. And what that's going to do is, I'll just show you, so let's kind of make a shape around, again, our problem area, and then you click on your selection, hold down the button, and you can move that selection around the image, and it's going to fill in that area with wherever you're sampling from. This really works in things like sky or patterns that you can't really tell that they have the same exact sample. And since you have a big blue sky here, it'll work over here. And we've also kind of like messed, it a, messed around enough with the edges so it looks slightly different. You know, there's still some things we could clean up, but for purposes of uh, animating this, I think it's fine. Let's get rid of this this base layer over here, the very bottom one. Now, when you save this, save as, and name it something that you're gonna recognize, like hot air balloon, and remember to save it as a PSD. So back here in After Effects, we're gonna be importing our PSD file that we now edited, and then we're gonna be animating it. Command or Control I to start importing. If it prompts you to choose between these two merge layer styles or editable layer styles, choose the first, because if it merges them, then there's no point to us separating them out. Okay, now that they're imported, go over here to the project panel, double click hot air balloons. In my case, it's gonna end with a two. And we're inside our PSD. So this tutorial is running a bit long, so we're gonna end this part over here and look out for the second half coming real soon where I'm gonna show you how to animate all the pieces together. So yeah, that's how you set up a file for animation in Adobe After Effects. This has been Sephora Zionist from Noble Desktop.
Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the second part of our tutorial on how to animate still images in Adobe After Effects. So like I said, this is the second part. Um, so if you're not sure what's going on, I suggest going back to see the first part of this tutorial uh, to figure out uh, where, where we're starting at over here. And yeah, so let's uh, keep going with this project. Okay, great. Now that we're now that we're inside of our composition here, we had double clicked our uh, hot air balloons layer here. So it looks like this uh, nickname didn't take. So let's just rename that round. Okay, great. So I want to show you how the layers are arranged here. So they're pretty much the same way. So I just want to show you, right? If you grab any of your uh, assets over here, like the layers, look, I can move it around, and we have a nice. And we have a nice blue background right underneath it um, that we set it up this way. It was great that we set it up this way. Now we're going to animate it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually animate the left one first, and then we're just going to repeat the process with all of them. So click on any balloon that you want to animate. Hit P for position. And we are going to put a stop uh, keyframe right at the beginning. So hit that stopwatch. Um, and then I want you to while, and then while this keyframe is highlighted, command or control C to copy it. We're going to put that down later. Um, let's move, you can always adjust the timing afterwards. I'm moving like about a minute and a half, uh, a second and a half in. Um, and I am going to get the position down here by moving my Y coordinate over here. And then I'm going to move it, my playhead, maybe around here. It really, it's not a, it's not an exact science. I'm moving it maybe about like a, a second later. Okay, let's animate this left balloon here. We're going to select it and we're going to hit P for position on our keyboard. So let's hit this stopwatch here. That's going to set a keyframe at the very beginning. Then I'm going to move my, uh, then I'm going to move my playhead about a, uh, sorry, a second and a half in. I'm going to pull my Y coordinate down here, the vertical component down, and then I'll move it over here. Playhead maybe about like uh, to three seconds in. I'm actually going to copy command C or control C my keyframe over here. So it actually loops around. I know it's kind of uh, choppy, but that's because, uh, um, I, and the last thing that I'm going to do over here is I'm going to alt click the stopwatch and I'm going to type in loop out. Now this is a, uh, a snippet. It's just a little bit of code, barely even. Um, and we actually have a tutorial on that, but basically we can use this bit of code to automate certain processes. So I'm going to put loop out here. And if we hit play, so you can see it's going down, it's going to head right back up and it should loop again right here. Great. And it dips down again, but I only have three key. F so I, but I only have three keyframes. It's automatically going on its own. We're actually going to do the same thing with the other two balloons. I'm going to cut ahead, but you get the idea. One last thing to note, don't do the same exact animation, like offset it maybe by like a half second. So they're not all going up and down like in sync. Uh, Cause that'll just look weird. Great, so now we've animated all these balloons. I'm gonna select them all. So control or command A, uh, close them. And let's get to the text part. So I'm gonna go over to layer, new, come on, text. We're actually gonna have two lines of text. So let me just make sure that it's typing. It looks like it's typing, but real small. So let's let's actually size this up. Um, so I'm going to set this real big. Um, the font doesn't matter, uh, for this particular exercise. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, and let's type in, let's just type in maybe like a company name or something. Let's say we're animating, um, some like stock, uh, images that a company sent us and, you know, and then they provide their, um, you know, uh, and then they provide their logo. Uh, perhaps they'll provide it, you know, either in a P PNG or a, a vector file, people will send you anything. Um, but you can try to recreate an After Effects or on your own. Whatever the case is, is that we're going to try and animate this thing. Um, we're, we're actually, we're going to animate this thing. We're going to put it on two separate layers and... I'm sorry. Okay, next up we are going to put in some text. So let's head up to Layer, New. Eh, come on, nair, <laughs> nair, layer new text. And let's say we are doing this for like some local business or company. So I'm going to type in, I just made up a random company name. Hold on a second. You know, maybe let's type in K 
okay, some company name. Sure, this will be our company. Um, and I'm going to place this one on the very top of my layer stack. Now, this is important because the way that your layer is organized, it's kind of like a deck of cards. If I had put it underneath, like this middle balloon here, it would get kind of clipped out. You see like that? So I'm going to undo that because we are going to save that for our next text layer, layer new, text, and let's put in some tagline. Let's say hot air balloon rides. I'm actually going to shrink this after I I'm going to open up my align tool set here. You don't really have to do this, but it, to do that, I went over to window align and I'm just going to click this so they are... So now they're aligned. Okay, great. Now I'm going to take this tagline and I'm going to bring it underneath the middle balloon here. It looks like my layers got jumbled a bit. I was messing around with them before. So now you see that it's actually hidden behind this balloon over here. So the way that these uh, animate in, like the, the way that these text layers animate in is not such a big deal, but... Um, um, but I'm going to show you just quickly how I did this. So let's head over to effects and presets on the right hand corner. And I'm going to choose, let's say, fade up words. I'm going to drop it onto my timeline here. I'm going to do the same for the tagline. So as I scrub through, it automatically animates in. These presets are really great for like quick animations. Okay, we're almost done. I know it's kind of been a long haul. So the last thing that we're going to be doing is that we're going to animate this all together. So we're going to open up a new layer, layer new. I want a null layer. So a null object. I'm going to actually bring this one up all the way to the top. I'm going to color code it so it's not red. Um, so I won't mix it up with the text. Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar, a null object essentially is an empty layer. Um, or more accurately, it's more like an invisible layer and you can attach different layers to your null invisible layer. So it's a bit like a marionette. When you move like the main controls, everything attached to it moves as well. So it's good for like animating a bunch of layers at once. So I'm actually gonna scale it up a bit because I can't see it too well. Okay, now that we have a null layer, we're gonna select, in fact, everything, everything all together. And you see like this little swirl over here? You want this swirl near the end of the uh, row over here. And we are going to parent it. We're going to parent this chunk of layers over to our null. And what that essentially means is that all of these layers are going to look to this null for direction. So if I open up position and I shift it down, everything moves together. So I'm clicking and dragging and moving these over before. Blah. Oh, one last thing. I'm just going to move these over, these text layers over just a little bit so they start appearing in after the uh, zoom in starts. Okay, so let's open up S for scale, shift P for position, so we have position and scale present. And let's actually start with, uh, yeah. Okay, great. And let's hit a keyframe. Let's hit the stopwatch to set a keyframe for both. And I want to essentially follow the letters as they uh, fade in and kind of rise up with the motion. So let's scale this thing up as if we're moving into the picture. And we're going to be using position to keep everything centered. So we're going to keep adjusting our X and Y coordinates. You can do it manually by clicking and dragging everything, but I just prefer this way. Um, like when I'm being a little more exact, this is what I prefer. Um, I actually want this to move a little bit slower because it's heading in in one second. So, you know, just, uh, you know, just fiddle. And then finally, one last thing. I just want it to move up a little bit. And then the last thing is that I'm animating it moving up a little bit. And I'm actually going to push this keyframe out. Um, and then you collect everything together. Remember, right click keyframe assistant. Easy ease, and I've moved this keyframe all the way out to three seconds just because I want it to kind of pan upwards like the balloons are rising, but I want it to do it very slowly. So I'm going to actually trim this by hitting N, and let's preview our animation. Okay, so that's how you can animate a still image.
You'll be seeing this technique used pretty much everywhere, like I mentioned. Banner ads rely on this method. UX design really uses this a lot. Think of motion graphics on an ATM machine. UX design really uses this a lot. UX design really uses this a lot. Think of motion graphics on an ATM machine. Instagram ads, even some kinds of animatics can use this technique. Just the prepping image step is also really like super useful as you can leverage those skills into animating your own art as well. So yeah, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to use the, I hope you've enjoyed learning how to animate still images in Adobe After Effects. If you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, if you have any questions or uh, things you want to see in future videos, let us know in the comments. Tell us about any projects you're working on or any topics you'd like us to cover. This has been Sapporo Zions for Noble Desktop.